Hey everyone, I'm going to show you how to set up a bottle web application on the Onion Omega that accesses the GPIO. I am assuming that you have set up the Onion Omega already and you've installed the bottle web application framework. I do have a video out there that shows you how to do that, so please look for that if you don't know how to do that part of it. And the, uh, the first thing I'd like to do is first thank user Dan L. from the Onion Omega community for writing the, the first GPIO helper class to access the GPIO from Python. It was very helpful, so thank you Dan L. for doing that. Alright, so to access the GPIO, you can see here I have a uh, webcam showing the setup of a simple LED circuit. So from the Onion Omega through a resistor out to the LED, um, we're going to turn that on via web application. But first let me show you there is a command called fastgpio that you can execute on the Onion Omega that um, gives you access to the GPIO pin. So we'll do a fast GPIO. The, command, uh, the option is set. The pin number in this case is 8 and I'm going to turn it on. And you can see on the video uh, the LED turned on to, to red. And you can also turn it off. Fast GPIO set 8 zero and it goes off so we're going to try to do something similar to that via a bottle web application and I'm going to have the source code for this project out on github.com slash young soul slash omega gpio so you can look at it all um, out there alright let's first look at the bottle gpio uh, application so this is a simple bottle application I have two routes set up one which will set the gpio pin and one that will read it or get the current value of the gpio pin and so the two routes that I set up are uh, slash GPIO slash pin number slash value. So this will set it. It will set a particular pin number to a particular value, 0 or 1. And the other route um, is slash GPIO, just the pin number, and that will do a read on that particular pin number. Now both of these are just gets, and I realize in a real RESTful framework, if you're going to set something, it'd either be a put or a post. But let's just make it easy for right now, and we'll just do some gets with some URL parameters. All right, let's turn our attention to the GPIO helper class, which is really the most interesting part of this. Um, and again, Dan L. wrote the initial implementation of it, um, and thank you very much for doing that. All right, so this class, uh, the way, the, the most efficient way of accessing the GPIO is you're actually writing uh, fi um, values to files in particular locations. In this case, sysclass GPIO, the pin number, and a file called value. And so the set pin method, um, skip this part for right now, and skip the pin equals 8 for right now. The way the initial implementation worked was it took the pin number, set the direction, because you have to tell the, the GPIO system is this an input or an output, and then you actually have to write the value. And this worked great uh, for every pin, that is that I've tried, every pin except for pin 8. And there's a discussion on the community forums. Uh, for some reason, there's something special about pin 8, and just writing to the file system to turn it on or off for some reason did not work. So I added a check that said if you're trying to access pin 8, then I'm going to actually um, essentially spawn a shell to run the fast GPIO command because fast GPIO does allow you to set pin 8. Again, I'm not sure why, but I, I wanted pin 8 to work. So I enhanced it to basically say if I'm trying to access pin 8 in that one case, um, execute the fast GPIO command. And the other thing I did to to enhance it was I usually like to, if it's possible, run the application locally on my computer so I have you know the complete power of the computer and the debugging IDE, in this case PyCharm, to debug my program. So I do have one more check that says, look, if I'm if I'm not on Linux, in other words, if I'm not on the Onion Omega, then simulate uh, writing to the GPIO by actually writing to a local file system, the ones and the zeros, just so I could see it actually work here. Let me show you how that uh, would work. So I have it um, up and running here, and in this case, let me go to my GPIO file, I have pin 8. Right now I'm showing that it's um, locally, just for simulation, uh, it's set to a 1. So in this case I'm going to change the URL so it goes to the route GPIO slash pin number 8 slash value 0. Now we'll go ahead and execute that, and if I refresh this file, you see it's written a zero. So this allows me just to run it all locally on my Mac through PyCharm. All right, so like I said, the implementation or the uh, the source code for this is going to be out on my uh, GitHub. So just let me show you how this actually works. All right, so I've got the directory out on uh, the Onion Omega, and right now it just has the bottle.python file. 
which is what you'll get when you install the uh, bottle framework. So I've set this up and I do, I am using the professional version, which has this deployment feature. The uh, community version apparently does not have this, but I can set it up so I can upload to the Onion Omega directly. And once it's done that, it has um, deployed all the files to the Onion Omega. And in this case, I am going to run it on the Onion Omega. And it does take just a little bit to get set up. All right, so the bottle application has started up. And now I'm going to go, um, so I know what the IP address for my uh, Onion Omega. And I'm going to go to the URL, the IP address uh, 8080, which is the port we had it start up on, and go to GPIO uh, pin 8. In this case, I'm going to set it to a 1. If you watch the uh, camera screen, there we go. So it changes that to a 1, Turn and it turns the GPIO on. If I change that back to a 0, you can see it turns the pin off. So if I want to read what the pin is currently set to, I take away that part of it and it tells me G GPIO pin 8 has a value of 0. Let's change this back to 1. You see the LED is 1 and now let's go read that value. And it's telling me that it's reading the value of 1. So that's how um, very quickly if you have a bottle application you can set it up to access the uh, GPIO pins. And this GPIO helper class is very useful. Again, thanks Dan L uh, for getting that started. And that's how um, you can access GPIO pins on the Onion Omega with a bottle application. I hope you found that useful.